bro fist to you all you wonderful people welcome back to pg towers on this fine friday which is of course a wonderful day because we celebrate lady bex's birthday today happy birthday lady bex who does vets and edits and check all the drama stories for us here on the show and she sent me a message here because she's currently celebrating her birthday with all the crawlers because crawler con 2024 is live right now the crawlers are gathering from across the world in order to celebrate and have fun together and apparently bex forgot to send drama time uh so <laughs> she had to drive back home and send it in <laughs> you forgot to send drama time over for me so she had to drive back home and send it oof imagine not having it all on your phone bex in 2024 you didn't have it all on your phone rookie rookie mistake via the power of google docs on your phone you couldn't get it sorted it's dedication well i mean could have sent it yesterday you know what i mean but i appreciate it nonetheless i appreciate it nonetheless that is absolutely fine we've had a stellar week of ups and downs and roller coasters and emotions and rage and frustration and horrors galore in our ff15 blind playthrough journey which much to my surprise has not ended i kind of thought we were wrapping things up couple of dungeons to do no big deal all good but of course it went all final fantasy on us and has a wealth of things waiting for you and bottomless pits and keys my friend if the title bothers you or my name does it's because of the lack of keys and where are my keys i want the keys <laughs> In order to access and do things. Oh, that would be a dream come true, is to have some keys. So we'll revisit that later. But after today's drama, we're actually invited to a special showcase for one of the biggest RPGs upcoming this year that many people are excited about, which is No Rest for the Wicked. So that will be following drama. So stick around. It should be super fun uh, to see what they've got. We had a lovely personal invite to check it out. So I'm excited for it. So it should be a fun old afternoon. But of course, it's why it's not why you're here right now. Whether you're a crawler or not. Whether you're a FFer or a wower or whatever the hell you are across the internet. It's not why you're here right now. You're here to hear the stories of woe and misery that occur in our internet world. Yes, they do. Under the guise of anonymity. That precious resource of anonymity to behave as a complete maniac and never tell your real life friends that you are in fact crazy when it comes to purple things and shiny things and all those things that you would like. And if you have a story to tell, because everybody listening to this does have a story to tell, then you can share it with us at drama at preachgaming.com because drama time is not only a celebration of the weird and wonderful online, but also a warning and a red flag to those crazy people today we're going to look at three games in drama time but one of them has never appeared surprisingly on drama time but i am curious because it's a game i've not played but many people have especially some old schoolers it is the game of ff11 the game that i fear uh, even though I will wait for the FF14 thing. Uh, I, I don't even know how to type this. I'm waiting for FF14's introduction of it. The case of the... This might mean something to some of you immediately, right? Our live audience here. The signed... Hobergen? Hobergen plus one. <laughs> okay, I can't even fit this in. I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just going to call it the signed Hoburgeon plus one. I don't even know what a Hoburgeon is, but we'll go with that. The signed Hoburgeon plus one. I assume this is a weapon of some description, and we're probably looking at uh, rage. <laughs> rage and anger. It's an armor. It's an armor. Let's have a quick Google. Let's see what it is. FF11 Hoburgeon. Plus one. Okay. <clears throat> For the no the non-knowers out there, including myself. The whole virgin plus one is a body armor. It's usable by all races. It has 46 defense, six strength, six dex, minus five agility. Okay. 12 accuracy, 12 attack, minus 20 evasion. So this is a smoking armor. For big smoking, it's level 59. Uh, Warrior, Paladin, Dark Knight, uh, Samurai, Ninja can all use this. 
Mmm. Looks shiny and actually it doesn't. It's like Final Fantasy XI. It looks terrible. <laughs> I can't even see an icon of it, so it's all good. Okay. <clears throat> Let's begin with this. Hello, Preacher! I I'm excited for this one, just before we get started, because as FF11 was done in the much more old-school style, I assume, my assumption is that items are very precious and coveted, and people get irrationally upset about items, which is I where I suspect we're going. Hello, Preacher! Of course, a Big Bex! If you're reading this, then I made it to some tiny portion of the internet. Yes, you did. While I am a current season of Discovery Enjoyer, Phase 2 just started as I write this, my origin of gaming comes from 20 years ago when my friends coldly and callously convinced me that a good idea would be to play Final Fantasy XI online. Now, Mike, these were the good old days, my friend. I had to complete a quest to get past level 50, having to defeat Mart in order to hit level 75, then there was crafting, which is where this tale will take place. Oh, it's crafting? Before I take you to the story, let me explain for you non-FF11 player and your poor the crafting system. Thank you. See, in FF11, you use these crystals. What a shocker in an FF game, crystals. And you put the materials in and you make stuff. But you could get high quality stuff if you were max level, which was 100. There was and are a lot of theories and crackpot nonsense to increase your chances of success in making high quality gear. Ah, I see. We're going back to these old, the archaeology axe uh, sword, as it was. Stand on top of the altar in ZG when you activate your things and you will definitely get the sword. One example is that wearing a staff of the elements of the crystal that you use for crafting gives you more chance of getting high quality. Another example of one of the theories that people use is to craft on the day of the in-game week, which the calendar says is the element that you are using. <clears throat> So I can't craft till Thursday because it's not fire till Thursday. It's currently Tuesday, which is Blizzara day. So I can't craft then. Okay. There's many, many more of these theories for this, but I won't go all the way down the rabbit hole. But trust me that not only do these theories exist, but people follow them religiously. Okay. <laughs> okay. My link shell. What would kind of be a guild to the rest of you. We could uh, could be in more than one, uh, but you could be in more than one at a time, just like in 14. But you could only see the chat of the one you have currently assigned. It was primarily just a bunch of people in their 20s and early 30s and me, who was 15. You're going to be the piece of shit in this story, aren't you? I can already feel the guilty hammers raining down on you. Now, my Link Shell was pretty badass. We were killing the endgame bosses on the regular, which took a whole day to kill. <sighs> God, I remember... We actually talked about this this morning, is I did a... I did a whole video on the most obnoxious MMO bosses, and FF11 won by a mile. An abs the Pandemonium Warden won by an absolute mile with its 24-hour attempts that didn't even get it killed. <sighs> Each boss took ages to do. The final one dropped a special crafting material called a Damascus ingot. And you could use this to craft one of the best chests in the game for a few classes. One of them was the Beastmaster. Now, the Beastmaster in FF11 was essentially a melee hunter from World of Warcraft, except that you basically just soloed the whole time and could tame a pet for 30 minutes, where it would then turn against you every single time until you retamed it or killed it. That sounds fuck annoying. <laughs> that sounds... You're a Beastmaster, yet you can't tame a beast for more than 30 minutes. <laughs> Perhaps you should change your job name to loser. Back to the story then. I added myself to the spreadsheet, which was done via an online forum, because of course the game is on the PS2. 
wanting this ingot because I wanted to craft the chest so that I could use it for my character. Of course, we had to wait in turn to get our crafting material. And when it was my turn to get it, I had someone in the guild craft it for me. Okay, makes sense. Now, all of this, of course, to the rest of you who have played these kind of games, sounds pretty standard. <clears throat> it wouldn't be that bad, except I was 15. And in my haste to make a wonderful, wonderful piece of armor for my character, I forgot about something that was very, very particular to this game. You could buy a crystal... A different crystal that signed your name on the item so that people could see who made it this was because it was a way of advertising that this player had the skill to make such an awesome piece of gear and you should seek them out if you were looking for it i gathered the remaining materials and had the guild blacksmith blacksmith craft my item simple easy peasy he was into all of the crazy theory crafting stuff so he refused refused to craft me the chest for three days <laughs> until the conditions he required to begin the craft were just so and we think the wow crafting system is annoying because it uses the mailbox <laughs> <laughs> I have to wait by the mail for like 30 seconds. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> he swore up and down after I had farmed all these materials that if he didn't wait until then, the chances of high quality were just not quite there. And high quality had slightly better stats and a special frame around the icon as well, showing everybody that you were, of course, high quality. So, like the ritualists of old, we sat around the campfire and waited till the conditions and the stars aligned for him to click the button. And fuck me, it did come out high quality. In part of me was hoping it wouldn't, so I could tell him to shove his theories up his ass after having wait me wait three days. But also, I was kind of happy that I did get the high quality item. <laughs> yeah, you kind of want to go and see. See? What an absolute scamboozle. Absolutely ridiculous. So I got my chest. I used it on my Beastmaster. And I enjoyed having this item for a very, very long time. However, this is where the drama comes. An expansion for Final Fantasy XI was on the horizon. And my main class was a bard. There was a new piece of gear that had been added to the game that was pretty pricey to get the materials for and make but it was something that we all covet don't we gamers it was bis i sold my high quality harburgeon chest around this time so i could get the bis item okay about three weeks later, I was able to rebuy it and was thinking, no one will ever know that essentially what I'd just done is pawned a piece of gear that my guild had helped me get to get stuff for another character. Why would anyone care? It's yours, right? <laughs> I, don't, I, I guess we're going to get into some anger with the guild here, but... Why would anyone care? <clears throat> if you had it for a really long time, which is what the guy says, he has it for the, he has this item for a really long time. He clearly used it, and then he sells it later. What does it matter, preacher? I was incorrect. When I was asked to link my Harburgeon to someone in the link shell. They started asking me questions. Excuse me. The item you've linked doesn't have the crafter's signature on it. That's not the same chest. What happened? 
to the one that he made you. I was nervous. I had never even noticed that my chest had the signature on it. I didn't care. I just wanted the item. I, of course, could not come up with any reasonable excuse. So, I did something that is beyond belief on drama time, my friends. I decided I'm going to tell the truth. So I did. So I did. <laughs> After telling them that, oh, I needed to buy something for my main abyss. I had to get the abyss item. So I sold that chest and I refarmed the money to buy it back. Then it all worked out. There was silence in the link shell. I think in my brain it was 15 or 20 seconds later that my link shell erupted. Everyone, everyone started yelling at me. It was the only one we had! It was the only one that was high quality with his name on it! How could you do this? It wasn't yours! We as a guild gave you this! And so on. People were yelling at me for several minutes and the guild master started to chip in. If you needed to pawn it temporarily, the guild would have given you the money and bought it back from you and then give you the loan. Why didn't you come to the guild? Why would you give them the item? Why would you get rid of it? I was shambles. I didn't even understand what the hell the problem was. It was just a chest and I got it back. It wasn't the same one, but who cares? But I couldn't fix it. The chest was gone. Or could I? In my haste, I told the guild I will make amends. For what? I don't... <laughs> what are you making amends for? So you've got one that doesn't have... Did this guy die or something? I don't get it. Is there like some RP going on here? Who cares? Mike, I was determined to make amends. So I began a journey to find the original chest. The one with the guild blacksmith's name on it. I'm curious to our live audience here. Guild's loot or your loot? And there really should only be one answer, as much as you might think it should be different, but... Whose loot is it? Once you've got it. Guild loot? No. <laughs> it's not the guild's loot. Item on your character, it's your loot. You can do what you want with it. If you get, like... I don't know, let's make it old school. If you get, like, Ash Candy or Warglaves in World of Warcraft or whatever, and you decide after you loot it and the guild says, right, you get it, it's yours, or a legendary, and you go to the fucking vendor and sell it, that's on you to do that. The guild can stop giving you loot. That's fine. That's totally fine. I'd be kick you from it, but it's entirely your choice if you want to go to the vendor and sell the damn thing. It's, it's yours. Like, what are you... Fuck you. They might be a little pissed off, but whatever. And this guy replaced the item. Like, who cares? Mike. <sighs> it did not take me a day, two days, a week, two weeks, a month. It took me eight months. Eight months of stalking. Stalking everybody online, everywhere, until finally I found the chest. Of course, the guy refused to trade me. <laughs> I couldn't understand it. I said, I will trade you one for one. I literally will trade you the same chest back. But he said no, and he liked the one with the signature on it. I couldn't believe it. Eight months I had been the ridicule of the whole guild and ousted for what I had done. And here I was, face to face with it, and I couldn't get it. I was defeated. There was nothing I could do anymore to try and regain the trust that I had lost with some of my guildmates who felt I was the most ungrateful person in the world. For what? <sighs> These old school WoW rules, man. But uh, Oh, uh, MMO rules. The problem is, though, Mike, 
I was soon to discover a different side of my humanity. A different side of my personality that I didn't know existed until now. It turns out that I'm a vengeful and very petty person. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> At least you have the self-reflection to look back and go, yeah. <laughs> so what did I do? For the next 12 months, I stalked the guy. When, oh, you didn't take it out on the guy. You took it out on the guy who bought the chest? Why? Like, it's his fault? Now this guy's got to deal with your bullshit? This guy who, like, bought a chest eight months ago now has to deal with you for some reason? Like, piss off, man. You're like some LFR Andy who got an item and some guy's like, Can it, do you need that? I don't think you need that. Will you trade it to me? I really need it. I think I need it more than you. No, it's, it's mine. I just want it for Transmog and it, I won it, so it's mine. And now this guy's, like, spamming you all over the place. <sighs> Mike, I stalked this guy for a year. Whenever he left the city, I would follow him on my Beastmaster. Now, there's no direct PvP in FF11. However, you can find ways to kill players. As a Beastmaster, you can give up control of your pet and it will automatically aggro to you or start attacking other players if they happen to hit it. Now, of course, as you can imagine, this is frowned upon by many players as poor community and toxic behavior. It can even give you a bad reputation. Well, my reputation was already in the fucking toilet with my link shell. <laughs> but in my mind, this guy was being unreasonable. He's being unreasonable. He's being unreasonable. You're stalking him and trying to get him killed and probably successfully a couple of times because he's being unreasonable in just saying no. He just said no. No thanks. I'm fine as I am. Will you please leave me alone? He had the chest that had my guild's blacksmith on it. Oh my god, it sounds like he joined a cult. But it's our guild. I had to get it. I would constantly kill this guy as my little beast master. I would leave my pets near him. And then I'd watch him die because he was in the middle of fighting something else. So he would hit it. Now in FF11, you lose experience when you die. I watched this guy over that year go from level 75, the cap at the time, to 74 multiple times and vice versa over those 12 months. Finally, on the 12th month, I couldn't find him anymore. He hadn't come online for two weeks. Oh my god, did you make this guy quit the fucking game over your chest? I was in disbelief. You're in disbelief. The guy is being harassed endlessly. And losing levels and having to regrind. And you're in disbelief. Dis this is unbelievable that maybe he didn't want to play anymore. I looked at myself in the mirror and started asking some serious questions, my friends. Did I make him quit? What happened? It turns out that this was about the time that they had opened server transfers. And he had pissed off immediately. <laughs> Bye. And of course, if you transfer to a server with someone that has your name, you can change it. I couldn't find him on any server. And Mike, I tried. I traveled to every possible server, hunting him down. He must have made an alt there first so he could change the name. Smart. I've done that a million times. I wish I could say that I had recognized my faults. Although I can see them in the story as I have written them. However, to this day, if I could... I would still get that Horburgeon plus one with my guild's blacksmith's name on it. And I genuinely hate the guy who wouldn't trade it back. <sighs> That's dark. That's really, really dark that you are still mad that some guy just told you no. <laughs> you didn't learn. You didn't learn. You did not learn. Uh, you've got to let it go. But also, fuck your link shell as well. Like, I, I mean, I don't see how you couldn't talk your way out. It's like, it's fine. I have it. It's all good, dude. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I haven't got that one anymore. I've got this one. Unless they genuinely stopped you getting gear, which is rough, if that's the case. Uh, okay, hold on. Right, we have an incident, which I guess is going to take us to Brackenspore? Wallards of Draenor? Maybe. 
The Flamethrower Incident. Okay. And we have Casimir, lovely Casimir. And Franz. I'm guessing, I mean, hmm. That would be my guess from a name like this. Let's see. Micah Chat, I want to take you back to the good old days of Warlords of Draenor. Where we thought it couldn't get any worse. Ah, yes. Those halcyon days, my friends. Ah, what's the weak one? It's all uphill from here. <laughs> it's all uphill from here. More specifically, I want to take you to Highmall. <laughs> Selfie cam patch poggers. Oh, yes. I remember that. I actually didn't mind that patch. The one that integrated Twitter was also in WOD, I think. As you might recall, and uh, as, at the time in High Mall, well, my guild and I were pushing Mythic for the first time ever as we decided Warlords of Draenor was the time we were going to be hardcore players. Not a bad time. Not a bad time to get your first uh, shoe in the door. I'm doing a pretty solid job at it overall. I was on really good terms with the entire guild. Except for one person who absolutely hated me. The problem is, Mike, that person was the raid leader and master looter. Casimir. That's rough. To be fair, I think it would be more accurate to say that they were on poor terms with me. No joke intended at you, Mike. And not the other way around. You see... The reason for this animosity <laughs> was due to one thing and one thing alone. The damage meter. Oh, good raid leader. This is great. This is great. I will get to it shortly. Casimir was the type of guy that in order to prepare for our awesome mythic progress, spent a hell of a lot of time watching the competitive world first guilds. And insisted that what they were doing was because it was the best way of doing it. And therefore, our key to success was to duplicate what they were doing regardless of our own players or experience. Genius. Nothing but genius. Imagine not watching Fat Shark. Absolutely ridiculous. Paragon, as you may remember, snatched victory away from Method during Highmall. And they did so by cheekily going straight to the final boss and then killing the butcher afterwards. We all remember that, so most of us do. So, of course, we were going to emulate Paragon and skip the butcher and go and kill him later, despite the fact that we now had a working strategy in the community of how to kill him and it had a ton of upgrades for us. Mm, we killed butcher first. Yeah, we did. So, there we are. We walked down the mushroom-filled corridor that led to Brackenspore. An interesting boss, you might say. Mm. They involved a good bit of personal responsibility for a very select few players in the raid group. As stated earlier, Casimir based a lot of his loot decisions on the DPS meter. Chats, live audience, listeners on Spotify, etc. Let me ask you a question. If you base your decisions on the damage meter and give the people higher on the damage meter more loot, is that a smart idea? Will that not have a very obvious and almost immediate repercussion <laughs> across the entire team? <laughs> I can see no fault with this. Okay, everybody saying this is somebody who is regularly top of the damage. I think this system works perfectly, actually. I think this system is a tremendous idea, and we can't possibly go wrong. Yeah, 100% good idea. Yeah, yeah, as someone who's always high on the damage meter, this makes sense to me. <sighs> Doing the fight correctly was the most important thing, 100%. Of course, unless he wasn't doing too well on the final pull, at which he would then be grumpy because he was lower on the damage meter that night. And by his own mindset, meant he would get more loot, even though he was looting himself. <laughs> oh my god, he likes self-flagellates. <laughs> you did bad DPS. No loot for you, Casamai, you pussy. You should have done better. You should have. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. I don't care if it's bis. Disenchant it. I don't want it. I don't want it. You don't deserve it. You suck. 
Look at yourself, you loser. Now, for those of you here who maybe never raided in Wallers of Drain, or in fact have never even played World of Warcraft and don't remember the the mighty mushroom beast that was Brackenspore, it has a very singular and unique mechanic where green moss will slowly grow across the floor in the boss room. It eventually, of course, will cover the entire floor and kill everybody standing in it. The counter to this are just two of the 20 players in the raid. Those two players pick up a flamethrower that appears during the fight and they run around the room burning the moss away. Naturally, during this time, you're not able to do damage to the boss. So, I had been assigned to do this. I is an arcane mage and Franz a warlock. Casamaya, imagine not giving this to hunters. What kind of idiots don't have the hunters doing it? Are you crazy? <laughs> you always have the hunters do it. What the fuck? Thank you, Siege. It's a hunter job. You don't have the mage and warlock do it. Slow ass warlock fucking drooping his ass across. It's a hunter job. In fact, if I remember right, hunters could hax it by disengaging into the moss and spinning in circles. Disengage is where you jump leap backwards like quite a considerable distance and they could like spin around and clear loads and loads of moss. It was really cool. Kasumai. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Why has the raid hunter... Uh, if you, you should get this. Why has the raid hunter not been assigned to do the flamethrower? Come on. Come on, why is the raid why is the raid's hunter? It's Casamaya, yeah. Casamaya <laughs> was a hunter. <laughs> and he was playing survival alongside the rest of the most sta mostly stationary raid and argued that his damage was more important on the boss. Good player. Here's the thing though. Every single time a player with the flamethrower burned away a section of moss. Oh, they did. Yeah, 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 they did. Blizzard accounted for this in the design. You got a stacking buff that massively increased your damage and healing uh, and diminished once they stopped stacking them. Yeah, I remember this. You could, you had to like time it so you could just keep the buff up. Additionally, you had to micromanage the heat of the flamethrower so that it wouldn't burn out. That was the general gist of it. You would set the flamethrower off, you would go and burn some moss, you would get a damage meter, and you would turn it off before the flamethrower overheated, and then repeat throughout the fight. So, ladies and gentlemen, there we are, at the beachhead of Hymal. We're pulling Brackenspore and dying a handful of times, with Casimir using his knowledge from watching Paragon and Method, <laughs> guiding us happily, and lo and behold, his green hunter is at the very, very top of the precious damage meter. I was working out as an arcane mage how to use the flamethrower for the first early pulls, as you can probably imagine. And it took me a little while to get a hang of it, but between me and the warlock friends, we started to figure out how to maximize our stacks and take care of the moss. Hi son, you okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm doing drama, so do you want to walk through? I'll catch you in a little bit, buddy. Every pull we did, my friends, that raid would start getting... That raid boss HP started to get lower and lower and lower. 80% first few pulls, 70%, 60%, etc. Finally, we lasted long enough for me and Franz to finish our flamethrower duties and go back to doing damage to the boss. Within just a few seconds, my friend, with my juicy, fat, girthy damage buff, I crushed Casimir and every other damage dealer into the raid with our massive damage buff. Casimir got very, very angry. His finger approached the push to talk key. <clears throat> I've just remembered something about Arcane Mage. Is that you're pretty immobile. And you have to use Rune of Power, which is a horrible spell. And makes you, like, pretty stationary. I've just made a decision, yeah? Is I'll do the Flamethrower. And that means you can stand still and use Rune of Power. 
and attack the boss. To be fair, it's a pretty genius idea so he can go and get the damage buff. It actually comes across like a big smart thing. I like this guy. I've got a <laughs> I like this guy. He's caught with an out that makes some sort of sense. I, of course, listening to this, rolled my goddamn eyes as this decision was made immediately after we had passed him on the damage meter. And Franz whispered me, lol. The next few pulls were spectacular failures. We died to moss every single time. I was feeling pretty chipper at this point, so I decided to offer advice to Casimir about what I had learned during the progress about managing the moss. He was really pissed off. <laughs> it was pretty clear that he was really more concerned with stacking the buff as high as possible and didn't care about overheating it if it meant he could get more damage buffs, meaning we did not kill Brackenspore that night. Two days passed between our raid days, my friends. And when the next raid night rolled around and two different raid members commented that isn't it just better for our progress and to get past this boss if Arthur just does flamethrower again instead of somebody else relearning it after we've done all the progress? He's already figured it out, so let's just do that so we can win. Casimir, obviously in the interest of not giving the game away, agreed. Much to my delight, we killed Brackenspore four pulls later. The damage meter, though, was as follows, my friends. Number one and number two, me and Franz, sitting pretty, right at the top, smiling all day. But then the interesting thing happened. Then there was everybody else, and just above the tanks was Casimir. The discrepancy between him and us was hilarious. Obviously, this was completely meaningless, as any DPS trying to get a record on World Warcraft logs was min-maxing the flamethrower buff anyway, but I digress. Everybody, of course, the whole raid celebrated our fresh victory and started talking about the shiny items we had just got. What boss are we going to next? Then Casimir keyed up. <clears throat> Great job, guys. These bosses in, uh, in this mythic raid are really easy when everyone focuses on mechanics and not damage. I just want to remind the flamethrower guys, don't forget about mechanics, right? It's more important than just padding meters with a random damage buffs. Now we've all seen the power of focusing on mechanics. Let's all just like keep moving on and keep up the focus. <laughs> <laughs> what a complete little dick douche. <laughs> I can almost picture how small this guy's penis is. It's outrageous. This fucking guy. <laughs> Franz and I laughed so hard about this moment. And we still, I swear to you, Mike, we talk about it almost like every month. And every single Mythic Plus we do, or every single raid we do, where somebody beats us in damage, we always bring up that maybe we should just focus on mechanics instead of pad padding meters. We did eventually clear High Mall, and I quit WoW a few years ago, but I love drama, and it's always in my YouTube feed. I vividly do recall, though, that Casimir trying a few pulls on Imperator Margok with our Enhancement Shaman on an alt. Oh my god, he was one of those. <sighs> yeah, everybody watched the Paragon video of the Flame Totem. It was Elio. It was Elio. Yeah, I remember from Paragon. Before quickly switching him out because shamans were making that fight there, bitch. I'd like to point out that Paragon did in fact use an enhancement shaman who was top of the DPS, which Casimir felt he could fit into nicely. My takeaway from all this is if DPS meters bother you that much, please disable the add-on. Thank you for all the laughs, Mikey, and I look forward to hearing this story. Me too. That's great. I love a bit of uh, crazy DPS. That's good. Uh, oh no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I hope this story isn't about me for our third story of the day. <laughs> I would like to point out I am not a stubborn raid leader by any means. We tried some new things. Uh, we always ask. 
I am not stubborn, raid leader. I am more than willing to change and adapt at all times. It's, there's never too late to alter a strategy. I am not a stubborn raid leader. I'm not. I'm pretty good. I am a stubborn human being, but I don't apply it to... I don't enforce it on other people. That's what I'd like to say. I don't force my stubbornness onto everybody else. It's not their problem. Okay. <sighs> Mike, audience, and team. I've watched you for so many years now. I want to say it's been great to see how much and you, you and it have grown and evolved through the time. Drama time, for example, improved drastically once you started having Bex read the stories in advance while still preserving the surprise fa factor for yourself. Dude, it was awesome. I hated having to proofread the stories. And a reminder, I only started proofreading the stories because people started sending me really weird shit, like a fetish, like voyeurism. That's why I had to start... And we had some stories which were, like, full of abuse. And we didn't realize it till the end of the story. And we had to stop reading it. Some of you may remember the times where we had to cut a drama story early. <laughs> because it got really dark. Like, genuinely really dark. So I was like, okay, this is not okay. <clears throat> Thanks for everything you and the team do. Yes. Anyway, I myself have played MMOs for two decades. Oh, he's new. Oh, look at you, you little youngster. Little chip off the old block. Two decades. And I have in that time made so many friends and seen a fair amount of dramas. Though none of it struck me as something that would be worthy of drama time. But then that changed. Twelve months ago. I witnessed the most bizarre incident that made me think as it was happening. This would fit into drama time. My friends... I go to the most drama-addled version of World of Warcraft that can possibly exist, even though it shouldn't. My friends, we are off to classic World of Warcraft. <sighs> Those do take it seriously. No, classic is way more serious than retail. Way, way more. Those guys take that stuff so seriously. It's insane. For a game that old... They take it so seriously. Like, it's the ultimate achievement. It's it's odd. I find it odd. For those who don't know, I need a refresher. Classic era. Oh, right. It's even worse. We're going to the actual classic classic. Classic era is the name of World of Warcraft's forever and only vanilla servers. It is easily the game's mo least popular mode. Because the masses obviously moved off to the Burning Crusade when they could and crave newness. It takes a very, very, very special type of person to play in an environment where you're going to have your final result be raiding Molten Core 52 weeks a year and you are never, ever going to get any new content to play. That sounds fucking miserable. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Holy shit. The results, if you... Are we going on an expedition to Classic Era? Is it live? I need to check this live. I need to check this. I didn't think. Is it? Is it still there? Does it just exist in some manner? Hold on. Alright, hang on. Let me boot WoW Classic. Is it just a server choice? I'm just checking. Sorry, audio listeners. I need to check this. How many people are playing on this? Okay, here we go. So I'm on... This is a season of Discovery thing. So is it not in... Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. Oh, so it's got, I've got a character here, but I assume that's my character that hasn't been... There's loads of servers. Surely there's only, like, one server that's up and running. Right? There's no... Because this isn't Wrath of the Lich King, right? Am I wrong? This isn't Wrath of the Lich King uh, that's out now. It's only servers to a little population. Is that the idea? Not a single medium PvE server. Yeah, like, should we... Hold on, let's check this real quick. Oh, this was me testing my UI. It's not even my original character. I ju I'm just curious. If we slash who... Uh... Orgrimmar? Wrath's using a different launch. Okay. Slash who... Orgrimmar. Zero players. 
Okay. Uh, slash who 60. Oh my. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players who are level 60. Uh, and I'm guessing they're bots. They're just mages and hunters. Three mages, three hunters, and a warlock. <clears throat> Hang on, let's do the real sadness. 40 to 60. <laughs> <laughs> there are two people. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> okay, that, that was nine in total. Zero to 60. There are 14 people playing this server total. 14. There are 14 people playing Much this server Breach. total. Thank you for all the content. BDW, my God. Have you seen Including the me, by the way. That's picked up my character. Trailers okay, yet hold by on. Any chance. Right, also they must have all migrated all to one server, right? This is really interesting. What's the busy classic era server? Does anybody know? What's the most populated classic era server? Earthshaker. Earthshaker's the big boy. Right, Earthshaker's the big boy. Hold on. Everyone's gone to Earthshaker. Uh, there it is. Uh, drama time exists now on Earthshaker. <coughs> They probably talk shit about SOD and retail in their Discord. <laughs> Imagine not playing it. Hold on. Okay. Slash who? Orgrimmar. Zero players. Slash who? Orgrimmar has nobody. Uh, slash who? 60. Okay, there are people online on the server. And they're all doing Alterac Valley. Yeah, there are people playing this. It's it's capped out the list. I think it caps out at... Uh, uh, did I type it wrong? Oh, grimmer. Okay, this server's pretty populated. <clears throat> there is a server that's popping off. <clears throat> okay, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, let's carry on. Classic here is the name for WoW's forever vanilla, forever, forever server. It's probably the game's most uh, least popular mode because the masses always crave that newness. It takes a particular type of person to play and raid Molten Core for 52 weeks a year. The result, of course, of all this is a community that is very, very tight-knit. Very, very small and very, very one-minded. It's full of weirdos that just enjoy hanging out, doing the same content over and over again while shooting the breeze with some friends i decided i was interested and started playing on classic era about halfway through the burning crusade as someone who'd had the time of her life during the original tbc the classic version just disappointed me because the way people approached it was just so different i want to say mike you made the right decision avoiding classic yourself classic as a whole I'd only been out for less than three years, yet I already found myself longing for simpler days with a community that was less focused on min-maxing absolutely everything and rushing through every single item from one moment to the next. And this is when I found my way to Classic Era. I quickly got invited to the service Biggest Horde Guild, which welcomed raiders and anybody who happened to be playing the game. <laughs> I was too much of a noob to raid back in vanilla, but I did get to see all the original raid content during the original classic version. During this, I discovered I loved 40-man raiding for all the reasons you list in your old video, and the most classic raid bosses were actually really easy to anything that came later. With that knowledge, I was more than happy to jump back in classic era and do it all again, though I still ended up being surprised by just how people were treating it. With how low the server's population was, it's still low now, but at the time it was even worse, there was no being picky about who you could invite to the raid. Often we didn't have the full 40, so compared to my experience of regular classic, things were slow and messy, though the banter was really fun. 
It was probably more vanilla-like than the people remembered in actual classic. Now, my friends, we're going to Molten Core. The easiest of all the easiest raids, where even big old Ragnaros himself, while very cool to see, comes down to spread out and shoot the man. Or so I thought, until I reached Ragnaros under the tutelage of Ryan. Ryan was an older guy from Croatia. And a Resto Druid. Jesus Christ. You intentionally went back to Classic and played Resto Druid. <laughs> he was one of the guild's officers. And also the one who did most of the raid leading. The first time I got to Raggy with Ryan calling shots, I learned that he had come up with his own way of preparing for Ragnaros. Which involved a major song and dance of calling out individuals' names and individually positioning them around the room. I'm not going to lie, I thought he was trolling at first. It was annoying and a bit of a waste of time, but it went on. In a 40-man raid, you don't always get to do everything according to your own way, and I figured that maybe this was how his guild had done it back in the day or something. Even as new people came and went, I never really heard anyone else point out that this was odd. Everyone just complied with what Ryan was saying until Rillin, the troll priest, joined us. Rillin's primary interest in WoW was the PvP, and he really liked min-maxing himself. <clears throat> he liked soloing dungeons and figuring things out. We called him Rollin as a nickname because all his character names looked like he'd come up with them by rolling his face on the keyboard or character at the character creation screen, and they were deemed unpronounceable by everyone. Rillin wasn't much of a people person. We didn't really know much about him since he never talked about himself or even actually keyed up in voice chat. He was really good and a good person to have on your team if your goals were aligned, but he seemed to care a little, he seemed to give no shits at all about other people. And he was known to be pretty stubborn and rude when it came to making any sort of concession that might benefit another player. Perhaps you have an inkling of where this is going. Oh, he has a place to stand at Ragnaros. Is this going to fall apart because he doesn't want to move to where Ryan wants him to stand? Real Roland, <coughs> Rillin began joining us for raids on occasion and eventually arrived at Molten Core under the leadership of our Croatian Ryan. There we stood before the Fire Lord and Ryan began the process of indi individually assigning people where to stand. Rillin! Rillin, you can't stand there! You need to stand here! No. No more, no less was typed into the raid chat by our boy Rillin. Ryan started to get flustered and was fully focused on what was going on in voice comms and not paying attention to raid chat. So he kept going. Rillin! Rillin, can you hear me? Really? It's really even in Discord. Really? People pointed out that Rillin was in fact there and that he was replying in raid chat instead of voicing up. What do you mean no? Really? No. What do you mean no? You can't stand there, really. Come on, really. You have to stand over here. This is where you go. Ryan's Tauren fat-ass druid was bouncing up and down a few steps to the left of where Rillin stood at that exact moment. This time, Rillin decided to type out a more elaborate reply. I'm tank healing. So I'm standing here. Ryan was somewhat nonplussed and was now beginning to get more agitated. What do you mean? That's my spot. That's where I stand to heal the tanks. I've been standing there for over a year. That's why you can't stand there, because that's where I stand, Rillin. Rillin, you stand over here, and I stand there. This elicited, elicited some amusement from the rest of the raid, but Rillin, true to his nature, didn't give a shit. <laughs> no was the only reply that really typed. Ryan was clearly getting very angry now as this is the first time he'd ever been called on for his shenanigans. 
What do you mean, no? I'm the raid leader. I tell you where to stand, and I stand there. You better be prepared to go where I'm telling you to, because I'm the raid leader. So either you need to move, or I'm going to remove you from the raid this instant, because I've been standing there for over a year. You're new to the raid, and you're the priest, so you stand here, and I stand there. Rillin just left the raid. <laughs> All right. And we proceeded to kill Rag without him being in the raid. I was certain that this little bit of drama would have some sort of consequence, right? But surprisingly, it didn't. I even asked another officer about it and got told that while the matter had been discussed, they had decided not to take any action. Everyone just continued as if nothing had happened. However, Rillin seemed to be a bit of an unstoppable force, my friends. Rillin got kicked from the guild shortly after for a different matter. And Ryan got kicked as well, ousted by the officers after ranting about starting fights about politics and politics in the guild discord as he kept bringing up the USA. <laughs> he had repeated requests from the GM that there should be no mention of the USA in the guild's discord, as it always leads to some political divide. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we can't mention America at all. <laughs> America is off the table there'll be no discussion of america that's it it's out no hey i'm gonna go visit florida shut your mouth no you're not disney doesn't exist it's over mike i want to ask you have you ever seen anything like this i'll admit that Rillian was clearly shit stirring and being awkward and refusing to move for no reason but at the same time it didn't matter, and I know it doesn't matter. And while I generally think that assuming the position of a raid leader gives you a degree of power, it shouldn't be a reason to kick someone because they won't move three yards. What do you think? Uh, I have to ask the question, was our friend, uh, the Tauren, Casimir, somewhere on the spectrum a little bit? Because that level of control is a bit too much. And I have seen several raiders, certainly at the higher end, who are on the spectrum a little bit, get very upset about things like that. Like, unreasonably upset. And you're like, uh, okay. I mean, personally, I would have just moved. Like, if it's a big deal to you, I don't care. I'll move. If you want me to stand there, sure. But at the same time, I'm not doing this every week. <laughs> I'm not doing it every week. I don't need to listen to someone position, like, excluding the melee, 25 people before we fight Ragnaros. I don't need to see that. That's going to annoy me. Once, all right. But if you try and do it again next week, I'm out. And if it's something that you feel the need to do, a compulsion to do, or some sort of reason to do it, then that's not happening. And if it's a power play, it's pretty flimsy, and I have no respect for you anyway as a raid leader so suck my balls that's not going to happen either but that is the way it is and that's okay as that brings us to the end of drama time my friends but of course not the end of the stream we're going to be jumping in to get a nice juicy look at this uh, no rest for the wicked showcase that is going live in a minute we've been invited to see 